Today I will show you how to use persisted queries in React.js. We will be using Next.js to create a scaffold for our project and then we will be integrating with one graph which is this uh, place that integrates different APIs and provides them as a one GraphQL endpoint. So one graph comes with persisted queries built in. One graph is one of the easiest, if not the most easy way to use persisted queries right away. By using persisted queries, we will greatly simplify our client-side code. In the previous videos, I showed you different ways of using GraphQL. And one of them was via this library called URQL. It's a GraphQL client for React, Svelte, Vue, or plain JavaScript. And it's a library that increases the code for your client. So this is the regular way of using uh, GraphQL. You need the library, such as URQL or Apollo, and then you're sending the GraphQL queries. But we will be using persisted queries. And this way we won't be needing such libraries. We'll be just sending those requests using the built-in fetch API, the browser API. So our client will be smaller and the integration will be simpler. So let's see how we can do this. So the first thing we will do is to log in to one graph. I will be logging via GitHub. And let's create a new app inside one graph. I will keep the name. And here, let's start with the data explorer. So this is the place that we can use to prototype our query. So today, let's say I would like to work with GitHub. And let's just uh, create a query that fetches issues from a project on GitHub. I will get repository, name on owner. So let me use my own project, Kretus. So if you're watching this and you haven't liked this project, I would appreciate a star on GitHub. So we'll be fetching issues for this project and we want issues. So let's start with the number and the title. So now let's run the query. And we have this problem that we are not authenticated for GitHub. But one graph provides us this contextual button that we can log in via one graph and we can authorize our app, our one graph app. So I will just authorize that. And that's all. Voila, we are authorized. And if I rerun, I'm getting the issues from this particular project. So this is the project and these are the issues. And now we are seeing them as a response to this query. So let's convert that query into a persisted query. So before we do that, it would be nice to name this query. So let's call it get issues. So that's the first step. If I run it, it still works. And now let's make it general. So right now the name and the owner on GitHub are hard coded. So let's extract that. I will make name, which is string. And let's make owner. And let's replace that. So name and owner. So now here at the bottom, let's just correct that. At the bottom we have query variables. And if I pass a JSON with name, so it will be credits and owner. As you can see, it's auto-completing. So it already knows those variables. So if I have this and this, if I run the query, it still works. So if I try something different, so I have another project called Redis, it also gets the issues from GitHub. So we have this query, but it's still a regular query. So now I will copy that 
and I will go to the persisted queries section and I will paste this query we tested I need authentication so I need to go back to the server side so I need to go first to the out let me just make it bigger so I have out services and here I have server side so I need to first create this personal token so let's call it github and let's select github we need to authorize our app again so now we have this token on the in one graph that will be used for queries for persistent queries that will be connected with it so this will be stored on one graph and just mentioning that token in our persistent queries will allow us to authenticate on behalf of this token which is extremely convenient so we don't need to you know configure any authentication everything is already built in so let's try again I go back to persist queries I paste my query and now I can reference this out token I just created and I can define other parameters the important ones are the three variables so the the ones from the query and I need to explicitly set them and I'm ready to create my persisted query so let's do that so it's created and I have the ID as we discussed in the previous video so let's test it one graph provides us this uh, curl example let's copy that and let's open VS code and I will just open let's say request or maybe one graph HTTP just a dummy file and here I can use plugin called rest client so if I name a file with the HTTP extension I can make requests so I will be doing a post request to this address and as the data we will be passing that and then variables so let's go let's say credits as before but this will won't this won't work because I need to pass a regular JSON here like that I need the header so content type application JSON okay and I need to wrap the names JSON so it's like that let's let's see and it works so if I used a regular GraphQL I would need to send a request a post request to the same URL but instead of this body I would need to send the whole query and here I can just send the query ID we stored we persisted on the server and the variables for that query so now we can generate a react app using next.js and we will just use the fetch API to do the same thing to send the post request to this URL with this uh, request payload and that's all so let's see how it can be done so let me start by generating a project so let's call it one graph persisted query and I will use npm and let's open this project in VS Code and let's start so it works so now we would need to remove most of the things like that and here we will list the issues so let's do let's do ul le okay it's not the prettiest but it works we need some state so let's call it issues set issues and this will be array let's test so let's say a and here we will do issues map issue like that 
Okay, it works. So if I have more, I have a list. So let me maybe put it somehow side by side so it's easier to follow. So now we need to just make a request from this component. So we will use effect, use effect, and there will be a function and just once. So the empty array at the end of the use effect hook. And here we will do the fetch. So let's make this function asynchronous. And this will be response fetch. So await. So let's copy the address. So that's the URL. And then the query ID. So let's call the persistent query. So it's simpler like that. So in our fetch, we need to trigger this URL. We need to do the post for the headers. We need to do content type application JSON. And finally, for the body, we need to stringify the uh, doc ID. And that's what OneGraph is using to identify a persistent query. So in our case, this is the uh, persistent query variable here. And then we need to pass variables. And we have name. So this will be Kretis and owner, Kretis HQ. And we need to get the issues. We need to have this response parsed as JSON. We need to extract, let's call it maybe GitHub uh, response. And here we will do GitHub repository issues and notes and this will be our issues and we'll be destructuring this github response so finally i need to just set issues i'm using the setter to issues okay so i think i need to do data so let's see okay this is asynchronous so we need to wait and then so before we had just uh, an array of strings and now we have an array of objects. So here we could uh, just say number, let's say slash title and it works. So now I'm getting issues from GitHub using a persisted query that's stored on the server under this ID and we can access it via one graph. So we have our application, this application knows about this persisted query, and we are doing just a simple post request using the built-in fetch API, the browser API. And we just send the ID along with the variables. So if I change it, so let's say owner Facebook and the project React, I'm getting issues from the React project. So yeah, that's pretty much it. A very simple integration. As you can see, it was pretty straightforward. The bottom line is that we are using GraphQL. As we continue working on this application, we can adjust our query. We can test it in one graph using the data explorer. We can adjust it and then we can you know, persist it again. We will get a new ID and we can go back to our application we can replace the ID and we can get a new data and all that with a very simple tool. So we don't need a GraphQL, a dedicated GraphQL library. We can just use what's available. So React and uh, Fetch API. So that's all. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.